Hey guys, I'm Will. And I'm Ryan, and welcome to Tantrum House. Tomorrow is International Tabletop Day, so if you haven't made plans yet for celebrating this wondrous occasion, you should join us. We'd love to invite you out to Boardwalk in Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah, that's our friendly local game store, and we'll be hanging out there. They usually have some tournaments, give away some free stuff, and just general coolness. Speaking of general coolness, today we're going to be reviewing the game The Siblings Trouble from cool guy Edo Baraf. Uh, and our terrible two minute review. The Siblings Trouble is a two to four player cooperative storytelling game from Pencil First Games. In it, players play as siblings that are sneaking out of the house and going on adventures in their imagination. Wait, imagination? I thought those spiders were real. The game <laughs> consists of players drawing from an adventure deck and then making up a story explaining the cards that they drew. So the game's basically a role play game, but it's just really casual, it's got a really quick setup and some irresistible art. The game starts with everybody getting a character card and a treasure card. The character card gives them a special ability they get to use during the game, and the treasure card has a treasure on it. They begin the game, each one explains what their treasure is and why they're bringing it on the adventure. For the rest of the game, the players will draw the top card off the deck and read it, and it will kind of narrate the adventure for them, and then they have to tell the story as they go along. So for example, the first card of the deck is always the entrance card. So the first player will draw the entrance card and then explain what the location is and how the siblings got there on their adventure. The rest of the adventure deck is comprised of location, big secret, and path cards. The path cards could be like an event that would trigger something, or they can be a search card, which allows you to maybe find a new fellow traveler, or treasures, or encounters. The big secret cards reveal who the final boss is, and then location cards will always have an encounter with either a monster or a trap. When players run into an encounter, they have to use their trouble dice to roll and see if they're able to beat the card. If they're able to, great, they can continue on. If they're not, then they can use their treasures to help them out, or their fellow siblings can aid them. Sometimes a die roll or a card will add a fear token to the final boss, and this makes the boss more scary and harder to defeat at the end, so the current player will have to describe what has happened in the story to make the boss more scary. When they do finally reach the boss card, everyone has an opportunity to roll against the boss, and if they beat him, then they are victorious and they gain epic treasures. If they lose, they go home crying, I think is what happened. Uh, Ryan, tell us what you think about the mechanic. Well, I really like storytelling games because they give you opportunities to really be creative, and sometimes you'll have those moments where someone says something that's just brilliant or really funny. I like how this game in particular resolves encounters because that's something that can sometimes get really complex in RPG-like games, but Siblings Trouble keeps it neat and straightforward. Theme. Uh, so the theme is what pulled me into this game because unlike Ryan, I'm really not a big RPG fan. I like to know like what the objective is and how I win and that's the kind of games I play. Uh, but this one is so like just casual and approachable. It's got this really you know cool Goonies-esque theme feel to it. The artwork is really nice. Um, it's, it's the type of game that you can approach as a party game and really have some fun with it. Uh, plus it's just got, like I said, cool art and that box with the magnet latch lid. Really, really fantastic. Uh, replayability. It only takes about 30 minutes to play. I think this would be a great game to just sit down with kids and get them to play and really stretch themselves with creative thinking. There's four different scenarios you can play with and the order of the cards is always going to be different and the game is going to be different depending on how creative the group is that you're playing with. So I think there's a lot of good potential for replayability here. Enjoyability. Yeah, I think what you're saying is correct. Like, the group that you play with is going to make a big difference. I don't think it just has to be kids. I think if you've got a group that is, you know, just wanting to have a good time, kind of a casual party atmosphere, RPG, I think you can have a blast. I think, you know, it, there are some hilarious opportunities here. Uh, but I do think you're right. It's probably not a game for everyone. Like, you don't necessarily want to pull your non-creative, introverted, awkward friend. Well, we played it together. That was... Non-creative? <laughs> Who came up with the vicious maraca shaking?